Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless a warning to america 25 ways the u.s is being destroyed in under two minutes one open borders and illegal immigration two rampant crime and unsafe cities three mass addiction and fentanyl four election insecurity and interference five the educational indoctrination of children 6. The asymmetrical weaponization of justice. 7. The destruction of private property rights. 8. Inflation and debt. 9. The global depopulation agenda. 10. Record low fertility and plummeting birth rates. 11. Unaccountable federal bureaucracies. 12. Toxic food supply. 13. Vaccine and pandemic disinformation. 14. The trans contagion and sterilization of children. 15. Overprescription of pharmaceuticals. 16. Destruction of the nuclear family and parental rights. 17. DEI and the new racism. 18. Moral and societal decay. 19. The financing of endless foreign wars. 20. The sprawling surveillance state. 21. The centralization and consolidation of government power. 22. The destruction of trust in institutions. 23 the censorship industrial complex. 24, state media propaganda. 25, the smearing of those who challenge it. Second Timothy 3, one through 13. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jans and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be made manifest to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Proverbs 29.2 when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. Every household in America, every city, every town, in our country standing in the world, all of it have been assaulted. All have been defrauded by this administration and his party, from the economy to the border to the culture. Biden, Schumer, Pelosi, they have caused incalculable destruction to our country. Yet remember the headlines from January 2021? Remember, they were meant to reassure us. Biden seeks to bring normalcy back to the White House after tumultuous four years. Normalcy? Is this normalcy? What we're going to do with Brenna Chow? Free Palestine. Can I hear that? Free Palestine! If you're a drag queen, then you know it, Chow. If you're a drag queen and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're a drag queen and you know it, shout, 
Drag Queen Story Hours are now going anti-Israel, like the one you just saw in Amherst, Massachusetts. Now, why should any of us be surprised? After all, the drag trans identity has been supported and mainstreamed by this administration in their highest level staffing and all the way to their actual policies, such as the recent changes to Title IX, which now stipulates that sex discrimination includes gender identity. I'm telling you tonight that girls' sports will never be the same again. Thanks, Joe. Voters see the evidence, and it's clear. Biden isn't protecting the girls, isn't protecting the women. He's protecting his far-left base. At every turn since his inauguration, Biden's chosen them over the working class, including in the reckless handling of inflation that they, remember, initially dismissed and then later tried to spin. We are not anywhere near a recession right now in terms of the growth, but I think we can have what the most economists call a soft landing. America's path to a soft landing has underpinned global growth. I've always thought that the soft landing was, was a plausible outcome. But everything he's done, from his extended COVID shutdowns, which weren't necessary, to the obscene levels of spending, some Republicans helped there, to his radical climate agenda, it's all driven us to the brink. Horrific economic news out today. The GDP came in far lower than expected at a pathetic 1.6%. That's the slowest growth in two years. None of this stops Biden's climate fanatics. Their assault on oil and gas continues, including the new EPA rules out today on coal plants that will shutter them and drive up our energy costs even further. These people are ruthless. They mean business. They're saboteurs of America's economy, certainly of our energy security. But of course, they're still trying to downplay it all. What is your reaction, hot off the presses, to today's uh, first quarter GDP data? A lot of the data there is actually not yet in hand. There could be revisions. The U.S. economy continues to perform very, very well. The fundamentals here are in line with inflation continuing down back toward normal levels. I mean, this woman needs to hit the bingo parlor and get out, okay? Does she think we can't read? Inflation's up from last quarter. When Wall Streeters start using the term stagflation, it's called hard, not soft landing, Janet. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. The pastor of Dad's Place Church, Chris Avell, and First Liberty Institute Senior Counsel Jeremy Dice, thank you both for coming on. I just want to read this, Pastor Avell, because I find it fascinating. The city put out a statement saying, this is not a bureaucratic dispute. This is a very dangerous situation for the people that Dad's is trying to help. What do you make of that statement that they gave to all the media organizations? I, I think it's a dangerous place for the enemy who's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Um, it's very dangerous because people's lives are getting saved both physically and spiritually at Dad's Place. And uh, that's what we're about. We're about the gospel of Christ. And we're seeing uh, lives transformed, people made new, and, uh, and just amazing things at Dad's Place. Yeah, and Jeremy Dice, to you, you know, it's one of those things where you think, I know that, that, that they're trying to create their own narrative here, but, you know, it was 20 degrees. We started doing this story. It was 10 degrees below outside bringing these people in, and they're saying being inside the church is dangerous because it could be a fire hazard? No, it seems like Mayor Kerry Schlade will do just about anything to make sure the pastor of L is in a jail cell rather than helping people in this church. 
She would rather drive people outside of this church into the driving rain, the pouring snow, and the heat of the summer rather than to have them in a place of safety. Look, over the last 90 days, we've been committed to working mm. with that city. We have put in new crash bars on the doors. We've taken away washers and dryers at their insistence. We've taken out an oven at their insistence. We've applied for approval through the state at their insistence. Right. We have done everything we possibly can, move people out of the building like the caretaker that was there 24 hours a day, as well as someone who had a very serious seizure condition. That person, yeah. because he was beside, alone by himself, outside of the safe church that he used to be in with a lot of other people, has now passed away. Yeah. How many more people have to be displaced, dislodged, and, and moved out of that church for the mayor to be happy here? She will not rest until, yeah. until Pastor Avell is in jail and that church is shut down. But we will not rest until Pastor Avell continues his ministry unabated by the city of Bryan, Ohio. I said at the top, Jeremy Dice is no quitter. Here, here's the thing I don't understand because the, the city is saying that this is a dangerous situation, but the people you have helped, and I have their sound right here, Pastor Avell, seem to think that you have helped them quite greatly. Watch. I was alone for a long time after my husband died and we lost our house because I didn't have it. I was living on $365 a month. Uh, probably in the car until we can find some place. Dad's place has saved my life. Without Dad's coming place here. Saved my life. Absolutely. I, I wouldn't be standing here today. I can, I can attest to that for sure. It's in the 25th chapter of Matthew that Christ foretells how he will come again in glory to judge all the nations and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will place the sheep at his right hand but the goats at the left. Christ says to those who are on his right, who feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, visit the sick, and go to the prisoner, that as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me ushering them in to eternal life. Those who are on the left, who are unsympathetic to the least of these, are instead told, depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Dad's place has saved my life, and the city says you are risking their lives. What do you think about this dichotomy, Chris? Well, I, you know, I think if we see someone on the street and we say to them, hey, go and do well and be well, but uh, don't actually take action to help them. Um, that's like a dead faith to me, right? Because my faith demands that I take action, uh, that I lay down my life in love, that I don't just say I love you, but that I live that out uh, in my actions. And uh, as I said before when we talked, Trace, I cannot do anything else. Uh, I, I am compelled by my love for Christ to lay down my lives for everyone who walks through the door at dad's place, um, from rich to poor, uh, no matter where they come from, what background it is, and I just can't do differently. It's what I'm called to do. Uh, Jeremy, lastly, I don't know if there's any solution. Is the city offering a solution? I only have 15 seconds for you, but it seems like they're harassing, but not offering a solution. Their solution is to send in fire inspector, inspectors at 5.30 in the morning to uh, discover new evidence to use against this pastor and his church and to say, you need to shut down, leave town, or go to jail. Those are, no con those are no choices at all, especially when the First Amendment has made the choice for this pastor already, which says you can be a church in Bryan, Ohio, without Mayor Schlade telling you to go to jail. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13, 3, 1 Corinthians 12, 26. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. The tornado threat in the central U.S. just won't stop. This morning, America's heartland hit again. Big debris! Almost got hit by sheet metal! This violent twister ripping through Westmoreland, Kansas, tearing apart nearly two dozen homes, causing extensive damage. 
I mean, it was crazy. It was loud. Everyone was freaking out. Everyone got downstairs, everything. It was crazy. The same system hammering Kansas and Oklahoma with golf ball sized hail. Authorities confirm one person was killed yesterday. It's just the latest severe system in a violent week, with more than 170 reported tornadoes slamming the region over the last six days. Authorities confirming six deaths across multiple states, including a four-month-old baby in Oklahoma. A friend says the child's family was inside their home when a twister picked it up and tossed it roughly 200 yards. The family telling NBC News, we are heartbroken. In Elkhorn, Nebraska, entire neighborhoods are gone after five EF3 tornadoes hit the area over the weekend. Raven Foyt sifting through what's left of her father's home after he rode out the weekend storms in the basement with her brother. The house is gone for pretty much like it's it's destroyed. All of our family history is here. The family scrambling to save what they can fast. Is it exhausting to think that more severe weather might come through? Oh yeah, yeah. This has been a lot of work mentally. This has just been crazy to deal with. And you can see here people already writing messages thanking the volunteers and the crews that have been jumping in to help. And by the way, a similar story on tap once again today. Residents here will keep trying to sort of race to clean up knowing another severe system is headed this way. God warned those who lived after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah that the sin of homosexuality would be judged severely as we read in 2 Peter 2.6 and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. The U.S. has become the world leader in this abominable sin. From my perspective, the solar eclipse of 2017 was our Nineveh moment, and the solar eclipse on April 8, 2024 was God's final warning. I am not a prophet, but I believe it stands to reason we will see extreme weather, earthquakes, and war at even higher levels of frequency and intensity, just as Jesus said would happen just prior to his return. The prophet Jeremiah put it clearly and concisely as told to him by God. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight, so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. I believe God has begun to pluck up, pull down, and destroy America, along with all nations of the earth. I pray if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you do so today. His time is almost up. Kenya's floods have been lethal. 40 people fell out of a boat trying to cross this torrent on Sunday. About half of them died or are still missing. Kenya Red Cross workers search for them and their possessions. There's little hope of finding anyone alive now. Others were taken by surprise and trapped in surging floodwaters. Thousands of homes alongside the Tana River are now partially submerged. Those who could fled for higher ground. The government, instead of helping us, they're just pushing us away since the road is cut off. We're dying of hunger. They haven't even provided tents. They're telling us we should relocate, but they're not even providing transport. We're just suffering. We vote for them and they've forgotten us. Some places are now only accessible by boat. Weeks of torrential rainfall, especially in the highlands of central Kenya, have caused the Tana River to burst its banks. This is the main highway running from Kenya's capital, Nairobi, to the town of Garissa. And it's broken through in two places. It's the main route for food, fuel and other supplies to reach Garissa and several other towns beyond. Hundreds of thousands of people have been cut off. They're wondering how the government's going to respond. A lot of the people here say that it's been too slow and they're hungry. Many of them have been displaced for, for days. Yes, we are aware of this. This is happening in so many parts of, of the country and 
we are trying to stretch our support to all corners of the country because this, as I told you, is going to be a, 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 a big problem. It requires a massive relief operation. Visiting officials and politicians come and go in helicopters. No aircraft came to help when people were in the water. The government says nearly 200,000 people have been forced from their homes and there's no sign the water here will go down soon. In the news these days, we read about and see devastating events, each more unusual, destructive and unprecedented than the last. They are happening more frequently and more intensely, just as the Bible said would happen just before the return of Jesus Christ. These devastating events are not accidents, nor are they merely the natural cycle of things. The world is enduring events that are designed to bring about the end of days and cause us to repent. God is lifting his hand of protection from the nations of the world. No, things will never get back to normal. They will only get worse. As the birth pains continue to become more frequent and more intense, one has to wonder, how close are we to the rapture and the seven-year tribulation? Joel 115 Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. Mount Ruang in Indonesia's North Sulawesi province erupted in the early hours of Tuesday morning, sending up plumes of ash thousands of meters high. Lightning flashed above the crater and lava spewed into the sky. It's the latest eruption in weeks of volcanic activity on Ruang Island. The government issued evacuation orders earlier this month and says it is helping to resettle some families. It will provide them with land as it isn't safe for them to return home. Meanwhile, people living on the nearby Tagulandang Island are also being urged to move to safety. Authorities are worried the volcano could spew rocks and ash clouds. The airport in Manado, the provincial capital, about 100 kilometers away from the volcano, has been closed for the second time this month as volcanic ash is restricting visibility. Authorities have also warned a tsunami could be triggered if large amounts of volcanic material fall into the sea. There has been a dramatic increase in volcanic eruptions around the world and nobody knows why. You probably haven't noticed because nobody seems to be talking about it. But something is going on with the world. Volcanoes are erupting at a faster pace than ever, and earthquakes are going crazy, and nobody has an explanation for it. Nobody except God, that is. The seven-year tribulation is fast approaching this world, and the news headlines prove it. God in his grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of its complacency. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. Jesus is likening last day's events to a woman in labor. The closer we get to Jesus' second coming, Last day signs and calamities will become more frequent and more intense. Following the rapture of all true Christians to heaven, the Bible warns us that the wrath of God will be poured out on an unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation seems to include a massive volcanic eruption, as we read in Revelation 8.8. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. Australian stargazers will be able to spot a rare comet if they look to the night sky in the weeks ahead. The so-called Devil's Comet is making its first appearance in 71 years. It's spent the last few months wowing astronomers in the US. Now Comet 12, Ponds Brooks, is taking a trip down under. Over the coming weeks, it's going to gradually get higher and higher in the sky every single evening. It's going to get a little bit fainter, but it is actually going to get a little bit easier to spot because the moon will get out of the way, the sky will be darker, and it will be further from the horizon at, say, 6.30 in the evening, making it a little easier to pick up. The comet is around 34 kilometres in diameter and is essentially made up of ice, rock, space dust and debris. It only enters our solar system every 71 years. And there are more comets coming our way this year. There's another comet swinging once that has the wonderful name of C slash 2023 A3 Chuchin Shan Atlas. This thing is going to pass directly between the Earth and the Sun on the 12th of October. It may even briefly be visible in daylight, which is insane. But more realistically, it will then become a really nice object in the evening sky after sunset. 
an exciting time for space fans across the country. The seven-year tribulation is fast approaching this world and the news headlines prove it. God in his grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of its complacency. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. Jesus is likening last day's events to a woman in labor. The closer we get to Jesus' second coming, last day signs and calamities will become more frequent and more intense. Following the rapture of all true Christians to heaven, the Bible warns us that the wrath of God will be poured out on an unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes a massive asteroid impact as we read in Revelation 8, 10, and 11. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood, a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water, because it was made bitter. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. More bad news out of the Middle East and out of Israel. Here's a quote for you. Pouring jet fuel on the fires of anti-Semitism. That's what Benjamin Netanyahu says will happen if the International Criminal Court issues arrest warrants against Israeli leaders. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Israel today urging Hamas to accept Israel's latest ceasefire proposal. CBN's Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. On Secretary Blinken's seventh trip to the Middle East since the October 7th attack by Hamas and the ensuing war in Gaza, he urged the terror group to accept Israel's latest ceasefire proposal. The only reason that that wouldn't be achieved is because of Hamas. Uh, there is a proposal on the table, and as we've said, uh, no delays, no, excu no excuses. Whether or not Hamas accepts the deal, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu promised the parents of hostages that Israel will invade the Gazan city of Rafa and take out the last Hamas battalions. While the White House opposes an invasion of Rafah on the grounds there's no credible plan to protect civilians, there are reports the IDF will declare a new safe zone for the city's residents. Despite U.S. pressure, Israeli officials believe the Rafah operation is essential to defeating Hamas, securing the border, and rescuing the hostages. Former U.S. Envoy Eli Kohenim came out of high-level meetings with Netanyahu advisors, believing that invading Rafah is essential. Nothing could be more clear than the need for Israel to finally and fully eliminate Hamas and Hamas's military capabilities by entering Rafah and destroying the last battalions that exist there. Some members of the coalition government threatened to pull out if it suspends the Rafah operation and two IDF divisions are preparing for the invasion. The Netanyahu now publicly speaking out against reports against the International the Criminal Court may issue arrest warrants against him and other Israeli leaders, calling the potential move an historic outrage. Branding Israel's leaders and soldiers as war criminals will pour jet fuel on the fires of anti-Semitism, those fires that are already raging on the campuses of America and across capitals around the world. It will also be the first time that a democratic country fighting for its life according to the rules of war is itself accused of war crimes. The Israeli army, the IDF, is one of the most moral militaries in the world. It's disgusting and there's no other word for it. It's a terrible hypocrisy. It's going to be a stain on the ICC. And uh, I do hope that the United States, the Biden administration are, and European allies are doing everything in their power to prevent such a travesty of justice. What the world doesn't understand is that this is a spiritual war fought in the physical realm. Ephesians 6.12 For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Satan hates the Jews with a passion. He hates them because God provided both the Bible and the Messiah through them. He hates them because God called them to be his chosen people. He hates them because God has promised to save a remnant of them 
He hates them because God loves them. Satan works overtime to plant seeds of hatred in people's hearts toward the Jews. He is determined to destroy every Jew on planet Earth so that God cannot keep his promise to save a great remnant. He tried to annihilate them in the Holocaust. He failed. He will try to destroy them once again during the last half of the tribulation. He will fail again. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.